And when we did the research on that, what you discovered is part of the challenge is individuals who are looking to do this may not clearly understand how to find those businesses, how to evaluate the risk, how to ensure that the capital flows in and, and is used in the appropriate ways to expand the business. And so from those two things, Businesses seeking and, and, and looking for patient, flexible, risk tolerant capital and individuals looking to make those investments in those businesses. Benefit Chicago was born and we really act as a conduit between those businesses looking for capital and individuals looking to uh, invest in those businesses. And so people or individuals can invest in Benefit Chicago through our uh, community note, which is created by Calvert Impact Capital. And we pull those cap that, that money together and make patient risk tolerant loans and investments uh, in businesses uh, throughout the city and, and the surrounding suburbs. It's been uh, a phenomenal experience. It's really seen as a um, framework that we're seeing uh, people across the country sort of replicate. Uh, and again, it's something I think that's proud that it started here in Chicago, where we have, again, a tremendous amount of individuals and intellectual capacity working to try to solve some of these problems. So for investors who, who may not be as interested in the social impact component of investing in a fund like Benefit Chicago, what is the return on investment to folks who are buying into the fund? Yeah. And, and so as I stated earlier, uh, one, the investment has to meet the business case, right? So this, this is an investment. Uh, and so if you have an investment that doesn't benefit the investors, uh, then I would say you don't have an investment. Uh, and so the way that uh, Benefit Chicago is set up is the investors are investing in basically a fixed return instrument. Uh, we are uh, one to four uh, percent interest return and one to 12 years on the investment. And so it looks uh, pretty much like a CD. The longer you're in, the higher the interest rate. And so they get that fixed return. And so we are then taking those dollars and then deploying and making the investment so that the investor knows their return expectation in advance of them making the investment. And so you mentioned that this is a non-risk averse fund. So there is some some risk inherent in the work that you're doing. Can you talk a little bit about how your fund could add diversity to a portfolio? So, yeah. So I, I, I would argue, uh, and we often talk with investors that would say, okay, what's the return that I get on my investment? And you say, okay, well, if you invest for 10 years, you can get 4% interest as an, as an example. And they say, oh, well, that's not a market rate return. And my argument would be it depends on what market, right, that markets aren't all the same. There's a, a bond market. There's a CD market. There's uh, you know, a stock market. Uh, and so if you have a diverse portfolio, uh, then your portfolio should be targeted to get a certain return. But you may have individual investments within that portfolio that are hitting different targets. And so I would argue that any well-structured uh, portfolio of investments has some fixed assets in it. And that benefits Chicago and your investments in, in us and in our city uh, could be a part of your fixed returns. And so it isn't necessarily the individual investment you should be concerned about, but the overall investment of your portfolio. Uh, and so we believe we can add that diversity to a mix, but also you get the social return as well. And so we think that that is something, again, that people we are talking to are interested in. And I think it's an excellent part of any well-constructed investment portfolio. So I'd like to talk a little bit about how Benefit Chicago is benefiting Chicagoans. Um, you operate on kind of three principles, uh, as it says on the front page of your website, uh, to one, build wealth to create jobs, and three, enhance job readiness in Chicago. Can you speak to the way your fund is accomplishing each of these objectives? Yeah, it, it, it's it's fairly straightforward. And those are goals that are broad uh, enough to allow, I think, the flexibility necessary to address the individual borrower needs on the uh, creation of jobs. Uh, that's the straightforward one, right, that we find that there are a number of businesses, again, who have a product have a strong customer base, uh, and are looking to expand and create uh, additional jobs. Uh, and so providing the capital to them uh, is really a straightforward uh, a transaction that we can see through our due diligence and underwriting that they have the revenue necessary, they've got the business plan, and we can help them sort of expand. And we've seen a number of instances 
where this has taken place, whether it's working with Sweet Beginnings, which is in North Lawndale, where our investment had helped them expand their online offerings and back office uh, uh, computer suites, which immediately turned into additional uh, sales uh, and inventory uh, increases. And so we saw where the capital comes in, really sort of updates sort of the back office, their website, online presence. Uh, and then that translates into needing more employees to handle the additional uh, sort of demands from the customer. And so we see that uh, taking place. On the job training uh, front and job preparedness, we've seen a variety of investments and things that we've made that are helping to expand opportunities for people to get employed. Again, whether that is a job training program uh, where we've worked really hard to provide uh, them with the necessary capital to expand and their training uh, outreaches and so forth. We've also seen but haven't made an investment yet in, which is a number of sort of organizations trying to solve the student loan problem, as an example, right? That if we could work in a way to offset the student loan debt, that that is an avenue for them to be better prepared to perhaps take on uh, different types of jobs. Uh, we, we've talked to a number of people who said because they've had so much student debt, they would like to work in the social space but feel that the social space isn't paying the, the revenue and income that they need in order to pay off their student loans. And so trying to solve those issues, I think, are, are things that allow people, again, to be better prepared for the jobs that they want to take and the opportunities that they get. The, the other one, which is the sort of wealth building, we know from research that small local community businesses, when they do better, the community does better. They're more likely to hire local. They're more likely to spend profits back in the community. And so any way that we can help small business owners expand and grow, creating more wealth, whether that's buying more assets and buildings, hiring more people, paying better wages, uh, we know that that has a direct impact uh, on the communities from which their their businesses are in. So I know that Benefit Chicago is affiliated with the Chicago Community Trust. I'm interested to know how you started Benefit Chicago. Were you approached by CCT? Did you approach CCT? No, so this is this was uh, you know it's an interesting thing. The trust and MacArthur were just getting uh, Benefit Chicago uh, off the ground. It had uh, an announcement I think was pending uh, in a couple of weeks that they were uh, sort of launching this initiative, uh, and we had some individuals who were part of that team um, actually reach out and say, "Hey, we're starting this new initiative. Here's what it is. We're looking for you know an executive director." Might you be interested in this opportunity uh, to work, you know, with us on this? When you've got, you know, in MacArthur's case, world class institution or global, uh, and you've got really the premier sort of community tr in the trust community uh, organization, it's hard to say no to that, right? That you've got a long history in the trust, hundred plus years on the ground in the city, tackling real issues in the community with the sort of expertise and impact investment knowledge of a global philanthropy, philanthropy organization like MacArthur, that is just something that, uh, uh, as they say, those kind of cars don't pass you every day, right? And that you have to sort of jump on board, even not clearly knowing what exactly it was. You know, I mean, you just took yeah, a Yeah, did you have misgivings about uh, taking on this role? No, not at all. I, I mean, there, there are, are opportunities uh, that you have to take. As they say, we're sort of risk tolerant. Uh, and I think uh, you have to be as well. And you sort of just jump in with two feet. Uh, and it has, again, been phenomenal. The, the, the support that our individual investors have for our city and concern is tremendous. I mean, Chicago is, is a world-class city with world-class citizens that are concerned about not just their downtown area, but their entire city. And people from all over our city are contributing, are investing, are referring businesses and those sorts of things. And it's just humbling that I'm able to wake up every day uh, and really sort of think about how we deploy this capital, how we can support small businesses, how we help medium sized businesses grow. How do we partner with our community development financial institutions and intermediaries? And just the collaboration around our city is just fantastic. And so, again, just honored uh, to be there. Wouldn't change it for the world. If I could go back in time and know exactly what I know today, I'd still do the same thing. Where do you see? benefit Chicago in five years? So that that's an interesting question. Um, I, I don't know if I'm uh, one to answer that. You know, what I would hope 
is that whether Benefit Chicago is still thriving and around or the fund has has closed and continues to sort of make do its investment sort of roll through, that we have set an example for what can happen when community and investors come together to really sort of take on some of the challenges uh, within uh, their community. I would hope that Benefit Chicago has shown uh, other lenders and banks and other institutions that you can actually make investments in these businesses, that there is a financial return uh, that can be made uh, within all of our city and not just certain parts. And I'm hoping that Benefit Chicago will be a big part of that, where there's now something that can be pointed to to say, well, it is possible. Look, they were able to do it, and now we can follow suit. Dr. William Towns, thank you so much for being here. We're going to take a very quick break and be right back with some Chicago hot takes. As China's role grows greater on the global stage, you want to stay up to date on the issues most pressing to China both domestically and internationally. Check out the Just China podcast for in-depth analysis on recent headlines and investigative reports on Chinese matters that affect our globalized world. We are Just China. Find us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy your podcast listening. And we're back with Chicago Hot Takes. We're here with Dr. William Towns. Dr. Towns, favorite Chicago restaurant? Luminati's. Cubs or Sox? Cubs. Favorite museum in Chicago? Science and industry. Favorite Chicago staple food? Hot dog. Favorite summertime Chicago activity? Millennium Park. Favorite current Chicago politician? Lori Lightfoot. What advice would you give to someone who just moved to Chicago? Get out of your neighborhood. See the city. Ride the train. What is your favorite Chicago neighborhood? Galewood. What's the neighborhood to watch? What one's next to really blow up? I think South and West Sides. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. William Towns. Glad to have you on Chicago. A pleasure to be here. Thank you. From myself and the entire UC3P community, stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane, and again, thanks for listening. <laughs>